Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, I want to talk about some things uh, that you need to think about before you start an equation of this type in algebra. Now, specifically, I want to talk about three major things. And a lot of you um, probably, you know, think about these things, uh, you know, kind of subconsciously or, you know, you've done these type of problems and you're not even thinking about it. You just kind of, you know, know what to do. So, uh, but I'm going to uh, suggest that when it comes to any equation in algebra or in mathematics, you want to stop, pause, reflect, you know, kind of come up with a specific game plan. Uh, you know, that's the uh, way to kind of really master mathematics. So I actually have two questions for you here. Uh, one, can you solve this equation? And if you can, put your answer uh, into the comment section. And the second thing is, uh, before you start your work on uh, the solution here, you know, what are some thoughts that come to mind? Like, you know, what are you thinking? Because you have to have some sort of game plan. You know, you don't want to just look at this problem and uh, just start doing stuff, right? That's not a good way to solve problems in mathematics. So go ahead and put uh, that, uh, you know, whatever you're thinking about in the comment section as well. But again, I'm going to show you the answer to this in just one second. And then I'm going to talk about some uh, major things that you want to be considering uh, when you're looking at these type of equations in algebra. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have negative 15 times c plus 1 squared is equal to negative 20 over 3. So the objective here is to solve for the variable c. Let's go and take a look at the solution. The solution is the following. Okay, so c is equal to negative 5 thirds and negative 1 third. So there are two solutions here. So uh, that is a good indication that what we're dealing with is a quadratic equation, okay, a second degree polynomial. And I'm going to get into this uh, more in a second. But if you got this right, okay, that is excellent. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in solving quadratic equations. They really won't know what that means, but, you know, it sounds pretty impressive. So just tell them anyways. I'm pretty sure they'll get a kick out of that. But let's go ahead and get into these things that I'm uh, talking about, right? So in algebra, you uh, are faced with all different sorts of equations, right? Now, you just don't learn how to solve quote unquote equations in algebra. Uh, you learn to solve specific type of equations uh, like linear equations, quadratic equations, radical equations, um, rational equations, logarithmic equations, uh, exponential equations, systems of equations. I go on and on and on, right? So just because something has uh, an equal sign uh, doesn't say, oh, you know, let me take out my equation solving uh, recipe and, you know, start this work. So you have to stop and think about, you know, what you're dealing with. So the first major thing you want to think about when you're solving any problem in algebra is what is this? Okay, like what are you dealing with? Okay, because that's going to, you know, basically get you focused on, you know, what you need to do, right? So now this particular problem, this right here, we got C plus 1. If we square that, uh, that's going to be what? C plus 1 times C plus 1. Hopefully you recognize we're going to end up with some sort of quadratic trinomial. We're going to get a C squared plus, uh, what else are we going to get here? 2C plus 1, right? So C plus C, or C times C, C squared plus uh, C times 1, another C times 1, so we get 2C uh, plus 1, right? So this is what we're going to get here if we square C plus 1. So this is a quadratic trinomial. Now, hopefully, you can kind of recognize that this is what, you know, you're going to get mentally. Now, you don't want to just, you know, start doing that, okay? In other words, you're like, oh, C plus 1 squared, I guess, let me go ahead and actually square this, because what you would be doing there is actually taking a, a longer path to solve this particular equation. Okay, just want to recognize, you know, uh, what you're dealing with. Now, if you could recognize just from the form, it's uh, the format of this equation right here that you're dealing with a polynomial, i.e. a quadratic, a second degree, a second degree quadratic right here, well, that's fine. But if you need to kind of expand that, uh, the main idea is, hey, what type of equation is this? And hopefully, 
you know, you see that this is a power two. Uh, again, this is kind of pattern recognition. So that's the first thing you need to think about, right? So the first major thing is what am I dealing with? And in this case, we're dealing with a quadratic equation, okay? All right, now the next thing is once you've identified what type of equation, you need to ask yourself, okay, what methods or what method or methods do I have available uh, to me to solve this equation? Now, when it comes to quadratic equations, there's actually a, a good amount of um, uh, things that you could do. Let me actually go up here and we'll race this here real fast because you have to think about this to be efficient at solving these problems. So here we have some sort of quadratic equation, whatever the case is. Now there's various techniques, right? So the first thing you could possibly do is take the square root of both sides, but that doesn't work in every single situation. Sometimes you can factor, okay, and then use the zero product property, set each factor equal to zero. If uh, you have the quadratic equal to zero, this is a great thing to do, but sometimes you can't do that, right? So you have to fall back. If you can't do this or this, you have to fall back on the quadratic formula. And this is a whole nother discussion right there. This will solve any and all uh, quadratic equations. And then there's kind of a long version to the quadratic formula, it's something called completing the square, which is definitely a pretty, a pretty cool method. I wouldn't say it's a practical method in terms of uh, you know, some of the main ways you're going to solve quadratic equations, but basically you're going to be using these techniques right here primarily, but you still need to know uh, uh, the completing the square um, uh, method at, you know, that'll definitely be on your exams. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing. Once you've identified, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're dealing with a quadratic equation, you need to say, okay, what method, uh, you know, can I use? And sometimes it's not clear on what method. And the only way you're going to identify uh, what method, what's the most efficient method is just by doing a lot of different type of problems. Okay. So there isn't, uh, sometimes it's pretty easy to say, oh, it's, this is the situation or this is the situation. I will say this, anytime you have a quadratic equation written in standard form, uh, something like, let's say three X squared plus seven X plus one is equal to zero. And it's set equal to zero. You should always attempt to uh, factor this. Now, sometimes it can't be factored. And if that's the case, you got to go over to the quadratic formula. But again, this is what your mind should be kind of going through this little checklist before you just start doing stuff. Because if you start just doing things, uh, you'll eventually probably get uh, to the correct answer. But you may very well, you know, um, you know, take three times as long to do this problem. And that's going to impact you on uh, test exams, you know, certainly when you're uh, working under uh, kind of a time limit. Okay, so what kind of uh, methods are available to you? The only way to, um, again, to identify or try a method is through experience. There is no ex uh, kind of substitute through experience, i.e. you doing a lot of these type of problems in advance. Okay, so, and the last thing when you um, are talking about various type of equations, now specifically here in this uh, uh, situation, we're dealing with a quadratic equation. Right, so quadratic equations are always going to have two solutions, okay? Always, always, always. And you want to be thinking about what type of uh, solutions that you're going to get, okay? So you very well could get two real number solutions, or you can get complex and imaginary number solutions. So don't make any kind of prejudgments on what to expect. Just let the problem kind of, you know, uh, you know um, the flow of the problem, you know, show you what type of roots they're going to be. But you shouldn't expect, you know, real number or imaginary numbers. You can get, you know, both situations, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this solution right now. Again, there's different ways to solve this problem, but from experience, obviously I've been doing this for, you know, decades. So um, for me, when I see something like this, like a C plus one squared, my first incl uh, inclination is this. If I can get the C plus one squared right here, let me kind of go up here. If I could get this, I'm thinking C plus one squared. If I can get some sort of number right uh, over here, right? If I can work this out where I can get a number all by itself right there, then what I could do is take the square root of both sides. I could take the square root of this number and I can get the C plus one squared. I can get this down to C plus one is equal to this number, all right? That's gonna be a nice technique. And hopefully you can see that that's exactly what we can do here, right? I have the C plus one squared right here. I have a number here and a number here. 
So don't let these fractions and, uh, you know, this coefficient or this uh, factor right here kind of, you know, trick you a bit. You know, we have a nice setup. We have the C plus 1 squared right here. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up. Now, anytime you're dealing with a fraction in an equation, the easiest way to kind of just get rid of uh, the, uh, fractions is to multiply by the lowest common denominator. So the denominator here is uh, 3, and over here we have a denominator 1, so the LCD is 3. So let's multiply the entire equation by 3, and that'll clear off fractions. So we're going to have 3 times negative 15, that gives us negative 45. And then we have three times uh, this. Of course, we don't have to multiply it uh, by this because, uh, you know, this is just one big product. So three times the negative 20 over three, the threes cross cancel. And that gives me negative 20 over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue to simplify this now. Uh, now, the whole idea is to get this C plus one squared isolated on one side of the equation. So at this point, I have negative 45 in front of the C plus one. Uh, uh, 1 squared. So all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 45. So we have a negative 20 divided by a negative 45. Negative divided by negative is positive. And of course, this is going to go away on this side. So that's going to give us C plus 1 uh, squared is equal to a positive 20 over a positive 45. And of course, I could reduce uh, this fraction down to 4 over 9, right? So uh, 5 goes into 24 times, and 5 goes into 45 9 times. Okay, so, you know, at this point, you know, I'm really liking uh, where things are at, but we are not done. Okay, so at this point um, as well, we have our C plus 1 squared isolated on one side. We have one number on this side, so the next step is to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Okay, so when we do that, we're going to get uh, the square root of c plus 1 squared is c plus 1, and the square root of 4 over 9 is positive negative uh, 2 thirds. Now, if you are confused about any of these things or any steps uh, that I'm doing here, then you probably need to brush up on you know some uh, specific algebra skills. So a couple of suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But uh, for this type of problem, this is stuff that I would teach like in my Algebra 1 course. So check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. It all depends on what level uh, you're at. But um, here we have C plus 1 is equal to positive negative 2 thirds, right? So remember, we take the square root of a real number, we're going to have positive and negative roots, not the principal square root, right? Because we are, um, you know, expecting two solutions for this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick this up here. So we have C plus one is equal to positive negative uh, two thirds. So to solve for C, all I need to do is subtract one from both sides of the equation. And here is the answer. But uh, this answer, if you have this answer, this is like an okay uh, version uh, of the answer. You know, if you turn this into me and I was your math teacher, uh, you know, it all depends on what kind of day I'm having. But maybe I'll give you 9 out of 10. Uh, I might give you 10 out of 10. i say, hey, look, you know, make sure you fix this, uh, you know. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't get in the habit of leaving your uh, answers not uh, complete. Okay, so here we can clean this up. We have negative 1 plus or minus 2 thirds. Let's go ahead and clean this up now. So negative 1, uh, we want to, of course, we're dealing with a fraction here, 2 thirds. So let's write negative 1 in, as a fraction. And uh, we want uh, that uh, negative 1 to be expressed as a fraction with 3 as a denominator, right? So that's negative 1 is the same thing as negative 3 over 3, right? Negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. So now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, these um, two fraction uh, situations here, right? So we have negative 3 over 3 plus or minus. So what does that mean? Well, one uh, root or one solution is going to be negative 3 over 3 plus two-thirds, and the other one is going to be negative three over three minus two-thirds. So yes, we have to do that arithmetic. No big deal. So our first uh, solution, uh, C1, we'll call it, will be negative three plus two-thirds. And of course, we have the same uh, denominator. So negative three plus two is negative one. So this is negative uh, one-third. Now, hopefully, you know, you're having no issues with fractions. If you are having uh, issues with fractions, um, you may want to check out like my pre-algebra course. I also have a ton of videos on fractions on my channel as well. Okay, so here we have the same denominator. So this is our second root. 
So this is negative uh, 3 over 3 minus 2 thirds. So negative 3 minus 2 or plus negative 2 is going to be uh, negative 5 thirds. Okay, so these are our two solutions as we were expecting because this is a quadratic equation. And uh, this is, you know, uh, I think a nice flow, a nice kind of path to take uh, to do this problem. Now, you know, there's other ways you could have approached this problem. And some of you, you know, I guess it's a little subjective. You might say, well, I don't like the way you did it. You know, maybe I wanted to just take this negative 15 and then actually, you know, expand this C plus 1 squared. You know, have that trinomial there. And then you have this. So, again, if you, if you took that path, right? Uh, you know, and I was grading your work, and you took a different path. As long as you have the right answer, I'm not going to, um, you know, be too tough on you as your math teacher. But I want you to uh, know is that there are different methods generally. It's, well, it's definitely for quadratic equations uh, that you can take, okay, when you're solving various types of equations in algebra. And that's just going to come with experience. So you need to know those methods, but what uh, is going to be the most efficient and direct method is just going to come with, you know, uh, the experience of doing a lot of different type of problems. But uh, I think the main idea of this video is before you do any problem, any equation in algebra and mathematics, stop and think, okay? Come up with a little mental game plan, even if it's like only a 10 second pause before you start the problem, that can really kind of help uh, focus you, uh, you know, uh, before you actually start a problem. Because if you just start, oftentimes, you know, you can waste time and go down a path. You're like, yeah, you know what? I didn't really think about this enough. And, you know, uh, the main idea here is not only for you to get these problems right, but to get them uh, right in the shortest period of time. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.